So today we are going to talk about salivary glands. We are going to stress on the tumors in particular. We will be talking about pleomorphic adenoma and Warthin tumor and a few words about the classification. So the classification uh, as approved by the WHO. So we have uh, epithelial tumors, non-epithelial tumors, lymphoma, secondary tumors and lymphoepithelial tumors. So under epithelial tumors we have uh, benign conditions like adenoma. So under adenoma we have the pleomorphic adenoma and the monomorphic adenoma. The monomorphic adenoma may be of uh, two three types of which the common type is the Warthin's tumor or adenolymphoma. You can also have an oncocytoma and a basal cell adenoma. Under carcinomas, we have the mucoepidermoid carcinoma, which is the most common carcinoma affecting the salivary gland. We have ethnic cell carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, carcinoma and pleomorphic adenoma, and undifferentiated carcinoma. Under non epithelial tumors, you have hemangioma, lymphangioma, lipoma, neurofibroma. And thirdly, we have malignant lymphoma. Secondary tumors from that is metastasis from the head and neck region, CA lung, skin cancers. Then we have lymphoepithelial tumors such as benign one such as Godwin's tumor, a malignant one seen as eschimoma. So a few words about the gland-wise, site-wise incidence. So as far as parotid tumors are concerned, they are the most common and account for 80 percent of them. 80% are benign and 20% are malignant. As far as submandibular gland tumors are concerned, 50% are benign and 50% are malignant. Minor salivary gland tumors are rare and 90% of them are malignant. Regarding sublingual gland tumors also, more than 90%, nearly almost 100% are malignant. One of the common etiologic factors, so we have genetic mutations such as the 12Q, 8Q and 17Q are known to result in malignancy. Central infective causes include mumps infection, Epstein Barr virus infection, previous exposure to radiation. The incidence of salivary gland tumors in those who have survived uh, the atomic bomb explosion has been found to be high. Regarding smoking, the incidence of Warthin tumor is more in smokers. The incidence of Warthin tumor is more in males as compared to females. A number of environmental factors have been associated with incidence of with increased incidence of salivary, salivary gland tumors. For example, region-wise, it is more common in Eskimos. In certain exposure to industrial agents like nickel, cadmium, dyes, increase the risk. So today's proper topic is pleomorphic adenoma. So we'll discuss that and then we'll go into Warthin tumor. So this will be taken two sessions. First session will deal with this, and the second session will deal with the surgery that is paratectomy, the few predominant complications of the surgery. So pleomorphic adenoma. It is also called mixed salivary tumor. It is the most common benign salivary gland tumor. Site-wise, in 80 to 90 percent cases, it is the parotid gland. In 10% cases, it can be the submandibular gland. In around 0.5%, it can be the sublingual gland. The pathology, it is a capsulated tumor with pseudopods extending through the capsule. Histology reveals multiple layers, that is epithelial cells, myoepithelial cells, mucoid material, cartilage and lymphoid tissue. And hence the name pleomorphic adenoma. Regarding the clinical features, it is more common in females unlike Warthin's tumor which is more common in males. It is more common in the fourth or fifth decade of life. It is usually unilateral and usually affects the superficial lobe of the parotid gland. And when it affects the superficial lobe, it usually presents as a slow growing swelling which is located in front, below and behind the ear. It presents as a single, painless, firm, lobulated, mobile swelling with a smooth surface located in the parotid region with the positive curtain sign. The ear lobule is usually raised and the retromandula groove is obliterated. When deep loam is involved, the swelling can be seen in the lateral wall of the pharynx, seen as a bulge involving the posterior pillar and over the soft palate. 
If only the deep lobe is involved, then the patient may not present with an external swelling, instead may present with complaints such as dysphagia. Usually the facial nerve is not involved by the tumor. So this is how it looks commonly. You can see the swelling lying in the parotid region, slightly in front, below and behind and the ear lobule is ra raised and the retromandular groove is obliterated. Now in about less than 5% cases it can undergo malignant transformation. That suggests that maybe a history of recent rapid increase in size or the firm swelling becomes stony hard or the person complains of pain the swelling or the swelling involves the skin with ulceration, involves the muscle such as masseter or the bone, involves the facial nerve, neck nodes are present or there is restriction in the jaw movements. Any of these features may suggest malignant transformation. A investigation, FNAC is the investigation of choice for diagnosis. Similarly, if a node is involved, an FNAC of the regional node can be done. Generally speaking, biopsy is contraindicated in parotid swellings. Ultrasound of the neck will assess the size and the extent of the tumor and about the nodal involvement and infiltration to the surrounding adjacent structures. CT neck will be a better study to assess the swelling, the extent, the depth, the involvement of adjacent structures and the influence. Alternately, MRI of the right parotid region or the left parotid region can also be done depending on the site of the tumor. The surgery is the treatment of choice of which superficial parotidectomy is done if only the superficial lobe is involved. Now, if both lobes are involved, then total conservative parotidectomy can be done preserving the facial lobe. The chance of recurrence is 5%. Now, postoperatively, radiotherapy can be given if lymph nodes are positive or the deep lobe is involved. Now on completing the surgery and if the biopsy report shows positive margins or the tumor is high grade, that time also radiotherapy can be considered. So now the second part of the session is about Warthin's tumor. So it's also known as adenolymphoma or papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum. It is a misnomer, it is not malignant and it is not a lymphoma. It is a benign tumor that occurs only in the parotid gland. It constitutes about 10% of parotid tumors. Etiology, it is believed to be due to trapping of the jugular lymph sacs in the parotid gland during development period. Pathology, it is composed of two layers of columnar epithelium with papillary projections into the cystic spaces with lymphoid tissues in the stroma and hence the name papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum. Clinical features, it, it affects the middle age or the elderly male person, smoke common smokers and those with previous history of exposure to radiation. It may be bilateral in 10% cases. Usually presents as a slow growing cystic fluctuation swelling in the lower pole of the parotid gland. The most common site is the tail of the parotid gland and it has a smooth surface. The ear lobule may be raised. So here you can see the swelling in the parotid region. Now here the different swelling is slightly in front and slightly below. But most of the swelling is in front and not, not much is seen behind the ear lobule. Investigation again the FNAC of the swelling is an investigation of choice. Ultrasound of the neck will assess the swelling and the extent of the tumor. Alternately you can go for a CT neck to assess the features of the tumor and the gland. Now, uh, technician scan, if available, will reveal a hot spot. The treatment of choice is superficial paratectomy. Previously, enucleation used to be done, but today the treatment of choice is superficial paratectomy. So, thank you. Next, we will deal with the surgery that is superficial paratectomy, the complications, and a few important uh, conditions such as Frey syndrome, uh, parotid fistula, and Jogren syndrome in the next session of parotid of salivary gland. Thank you.